Hey, this is Jason Johnston, Instructional Designer at University of Kentucky College of Social Work, and today we're going to look at a quick intro to Big Blue Button. We're going to take a look at how to start a conference in Canvas using the Big Blue Button, and then uh, look at some of the main features, and then on the back side, how to end it and archive your video. So let's begin. As described by the company, Big Blue Button is an open source web conferencing system for online learning. It enables you to share documents, webcams, chat, audio, and your desktop. It can also record sessions for later playback. Big Blue Button is a feature that is being used inside of Canvas's conferencing tab. So if you go into conferencing, it's the only choice right now for creating conferences. In order to create a conference using Big Blue Button, you click on Conference Button and you'll come up with this dialog box. You have some choices here, the name of the conference, type, right now that's the only thing that you can select, duration to enable recording, or put it as no time limit, which would be helpful for long running conferences or for something perhaps that you just wanted to leave open for some virtual office hours. A description if you'd like, and then down here, a place where you can invite all the course members. Now. Not only will this invite them, but it will actually allow them access. Unless you have invited a course member, they will not have access to this conference, and it will not show up in their Canvas shell. So right now I'm just going to use all the defaults, except I'm going to click on Enable Recording for this conference so that you can see how that will work on the back end. And I'm going to update. Now what it does is that it actually creates a conference, but it doesn't yet start the conference. And so it creates a new conference that will be seen by the other members, but it will not be able to be joined as of yet because the teacher has not started the conference. You can also go back here and edit it if you need to do anything else to it. But let's go ahead and start the conference. We'll load up another tab and take us into the big blue button screens. First question that you have is how do you want to join the audio? Uh, this will be a selection for everybody that joins the big blue button, whether you want to just listen or use the microphone. I'll do the microphone for right now, but in this demonstration, you're not really going to be able to hear how that works. It will take you to an audio test, It'll allow you to speak a few words and tell it whether or not it's actually working. Now it's telling me that up here in the top left that I can record it if I wish because I click that in the dialog previously and we must click that in order to record anything. Now from the top left we have different options. We can share the screen if we want to share everything on our computer. Here we can see that the microphone is on and we can stop sharing the microphone if I'd like to do that and then also share your webcam as well as the start recording option. Now down here as well you see the list of users and right now you can see that this is me, Captain Canuck, that it has a microphone listed after it. I'm going to click on share your webcam. Now when that comes up it will basically give us this option or this dialogue that asks for permission to use your camera and now we can see that uh, you can see a preview of what the camera looks like and change quality if you'd like to do that I'm going to click on start sharing. You can see that now my camera has come up here in the bottom left hand corner of the big blue button. Now I'm going to show you what it would look like for a student to join in. So from another browser I'm actually going to join into this conference with my other demo student Bruce Banner. We'll see his name pop up here at the top. By default nothing else is going to come up. He's going to listen only. And then we're going to start sharing. So now we've got Bruce Banner on the line. Welcome to the class, Bruce. Other options when it comes to multiple users here while we have um, Bruce on the line is that over here on the far right, um, not only can we hear and see the, others uh, the other users for interactivity over in the, here on the far right, we have some chat options. There's a public chat, which you can use if the audio isn't working the best. And then, um, and then the other students can chat back as well. Under the chat options you can also uh, privately chat with people if you would like to do that. I'm going to go ahead and close the audio or the video streams for right now and we'll look at some of the other features of Big Blue Button. Right here in the center it's obvious that it comes a default with this welcome to Big Blue Button screen. This is a slideshow that it comes as default. The second page is blank left intentionally as a whiteboard which is is kind of nice so that if you wanted to you could um, 
you could write something up here and so on. And, and then down here in the bottom left, you have an option of actually bringing up other presentations if you wanted to. So now we're going to select a file. I'm going to upload my PowerPoint for this presentation and, and then click on upload. And uh, you can says the uploaded document is supported, starting to convert. So if it's a PowerPoint or PDF, it should be able to bring it up. So here's my intro to Big Blue Button. One thing that you will find is some of the formatting may be slightly different. It uses internal fonts, so unless you're using standard fonts, it's going to sh uh, throw off some of the formatting, as you can see that it did for me right there. Then you can click through the presentation, so on, and go back to your other one after you're done, if you'd like to do that. The other thing you can do with presentations, uh, which is pretty cool, uh, on top of the annotation up here on the right-hand side, which you can figure out, um, but and once you do some different annotations, you can always clear them, or you can do undo, change the color, and so on. Um, is that you can you can actually zoom in to certain parts if you'd like to do that and uh, with the hand tool we can pan around a little bit and then we can go back to the default and fit it in there you can also pass a presentation off to another conference member so here we have Bruce Banner I'm gonna click to make Bruce the presenter now Bruce from another Page. Now we're seeing it from kind of a student view where we don't have all the controls down at the bottom. And Bruce from the other page is, is controlling the presentation and able to pull up various slides and so on. And then whenever we want to take back control, we just click back on here and create so that we can take control again of the presentation in the middle. Another great option in Big Blue Button is the polling option, and you'll find a button down here in the bottom of the slide area that allows you to start a poll. Now basically the way that this works is that it's expecting you to ask the question audio-wise or to have a slide perhaps that asks the question. So you can click on here, it'll give you different options for instant polls, and uh, you could go to a particular slide and then you could just simply ask something like, are you understanding this so far? And click on a yes or no. At this point, the student would have two buttons in front of them that they could only select a yes or no. You would see the results come in as a live poll, and then you could publish the results on that page if you wish. Other options down here, true and false, of course, any number of multiple choice polls, or a custom poll. In the custom poll, you would enter in various multiple choices for the students to respond to. So that's the polling option. So now we've looked at users up here in the left, uh, presentation area, the chat area. The only other thing to add in terms of users is down here we can change uh, some statuses. So there's different status that a, that a user can use. So if you were say doing a presentation, I was saying to everybody, okay, if especially important if you have a lot of people, I could say, okay, is everybody with me? Is everybody able to hear raise your hand. Say you're doing it in a way that it's not an audio presentation. Raise your hand. From the student view, they can change their status to a hand raised status. So you can see the little hand raise that's come up beside the user there. From here we can change the status icons in order to clear any of the statuses that might be up there. As well as mute users or lock viewers as we need to. Now over on the far right bottom the last thing that we're going to look at here are the different layouts. So right now we're on the default layout that has a presentation in the middle. If you click on this, and I'm actually going to join again with my uh, webcam, this webcam, and also have Bruce join again so that we can see what this looks like. We're working with the default layout. Uh, we can go to a closed caption layout. Now this is interesting that you can actually use one of your uh, users to apply closed captioning to the presentation. So they, if they're listening in, in real time and they could be down here adding some closed captioning and so on as needed. Um, we could go to a video chat view where you just uh, basically have the two talking heads up here and everything else is minimized. Webcam meeting that would give us our chats to the right there and a small area for our presentation. 
presentation meeting that kind of reverses that, so it's mostly the presentation. Lecture assistant, so if you had it, somebody as a, an assistant, that was basically, as you were doing the lecture, they could be taking care of the responding to the chat questions and so on. And then lecture, where it's mostly a focus on the PowerPoint itself. If we go back here to the default, the other thing you can do is on the very far right-hand corner, we can apply current layout to all viewers. So whatever you select, that would force every viewer to look at the presentation in that way. And before we exit, I'm going to show you what it would look like to record. So I'm going to start recording just from right here. Click on yes. I'm going to do a couple of changes here so that you can see how this would work. And then I'm going to stop the recording. And so now there should be a recording in the archives once we exit out. In order to exit out, we log out up here, confirm yes, and OK. Even though you've logged out, however, it does not mean that the big blue button conference has ended. So in order to actually end the conference, because right now the student is still in there, or multiple students could still be in there, we would need to go back over to the conference tab and click on end. At that point, the students will be kicked out. We'll see the concluded conferences down here. And it will take often a couple minutes, depending on how long the video was, uh, before your archived video will show up. But it will also show up down here under concluded conferences. Once a video is available to you, it will also be available to your students. Now one final note, the big blue button vision is that they believe that every student with a web browser should have access to a high quality online education. And they intend to make that possible using the big blue button. And I think that it's a good thing. And it works well inside of Canvas. The key to this though right here is that every student with a web browser should have access. And the big blue button, one downside is that it does not work across mobile platforms. So keep that in mind, depending on your audience, uh, the students that you have, in terms of how they access the big blue button. And they will need uh, some sort of computer browser in order for this to work. I hope this has been helpful to you. Please leave a comment below if you have any questions or comments.